Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ustaz Fahad is giving me a lot of credit. He's a year early. I'm not a doctor yet. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillahi wa kafah, wa salatu wa salamu ala ibadihi al-ladhi nastafa, khususan ala afdalihim wa khatamin nabiyin Muhammadin al-Amin, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in, wa man istanna bi sunnatihi ila yawm al-deen. Allahumma ja'alna minhum wa minal ladhina amanu wa amilu al-salihat, wa tawasubu al-haq, wa tawasubu al-sabr. Allahumma thabbitna inda al-mawti bila ilaha illa Allah, amin ya rabbal alameen. Qala Allahu azza wa jal fi kitabi al-kareem, a'udhu billahi minash shaytan al-rajim, bismillahi al-rahman al-rahim. إن في خلق السماوات والأرض واختلاف الليل والنهار لآيات لأولي الألباب الذين يذكرون الله قياما وقعودا وعلى جنوبهم ويتفكرون في خلق السماوات والأرض ربنا ما خلقت هذا باطلا سبحانك فقنا عذاب النار صدق الله العظيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لسان يفقه قولي I'm very glad Mawlana Umar went right before me because as you heard my topic is also on ذكر but I want to talk about something a little different we all know the benefits of dhikr. We all know all the ahadith. You know, Mawlana Umar shared a very, very beautiful one. We all know the benefits of, of dhikr. But I want to talk a little bit about how we can expand what it means to do dhikr. Because a lot of time what we do is we limit dhikr to, to mean, oh, it has to be with your tongue. Oh, you have to come to the masjid. You have to, you know, engage with, uh, do it as a group. You have to try to, you have to say la ilaha illallah and do all these azkar, which is very, very important. It's very, very true. But dhikr is more than that. Dhikr is more than saying it with your mouth. Because dhikr is remembrance. The word dhikr means to remember. And you remember not just with your tongue, you, but you remember with your brain, and you remember with your heart. So, in order to not make this definition too constricted, because that's what we tend to do, I want to, wanted to share something from the Qur'an. And the ayah I recited is, إِنَّ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَاخْتِلَافِ اللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ الْآيَاتِ لِأُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ Indeed, the creation of the earth, the creation of the skies, the changing of the night and day, all these things that we see around us, they are signs for those who have, who are ulul albab. And who are ulul albab? Alladheena yathkuroon Allah qiyaman. Those who remember Allah standing. Those who remember Allah sitting. Those who remember Allah on their sides. And what they do? وَيَتَفَكَّرُونَ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ الْأَرْضِ They think about this creation that Allah has made. They think about the things they see around them. You know, for them, dhikr is not just being in the masjid. And dhikr is experiencing everything they see around them and remembering Allah through that experience. What I call putting your Qur'an glasses on. When you put your Qur'an glasses on, everything around you becomes a reminder of Allah. Everything becomes dhikr for you. What do I mean? My favorite example that I often share is actually in Surah Al-Rahman. Allah says, Al-Rahman allama al-Qur'an khalaq al-insan allama al-bayan al-shams wa al-qamar bi-husban wa al-najm wa al-shajir wa al-sujudan wa al-samaa raf'aha wa wada'a al-mizan. With the sky, raf'aha, we raised it. وَوَضَعَ الْمِيزَانِ And we made it balanced. We took the sky and we made it balanced. Why did we make it balanced? What are you supposed to see when you look at the sky? أَلَّا تَطْغَوْ فِي الْمِيزَانِ So that you don't um, do خيانه So that you don't upset the balance. Other people when they see the sky, they look, they look at the stars and they came up, came up with crazy stories about the stars. They look at the clouds and they come up with, they, they look, for, look for different shapes in the clouds. Right, I used to, we, we, many of us used to do this as kids, I know I used to do, I used to lay down, look at the sky and then see all the different shapes of the clouds, oh that one's a dinosaur, that one looks like a cheeseburger, that one looks like this, that one looks like that. That's what people do. And when we're Muslims, you and I, when we look at the sky, what do we do? We are reminded, we do dhikr of the balance of the sky and that is a khutbah for us to, ba to do balance ourselves. So the sky for us, for Muslims like you and me, becomes a khutbah. Looking at this creation, every single thing we see becomes a khutbah. Every single thing we see becomes a reminder of Allah. For me, for exa I give my own example, I'm in medicine. Right? I study the human body. I'm, I'm in exam season, I'm reviewing all these topics. Every time I learn something, for other people it's just a fact. For other students it's just something so that they can get an extra point on their exam. But for me, for someone who has their Qur'an glasses on, they look at this creation of Allah because Allah says, وَفِي الْأَرْضِ آيَاتٌ لِلْمُقِينِينَ وَفِي أَنفُسِكُمْ In the earth there are, there are ayat for those who, who remember, for those muqineen, وَفِي أَنفُسِكُمْ And in yourselves. أَفَلَا تُبْصِرُونَ Don't you look. Aren't you going to take the time to look? So I have the opportunity, alhamdulillah, that many of you don't, to look. I can, be in this, I can be in the anatomy lab, I can be studying for a test, I can be seeing patients. And every single day, it is an experience, every single patient I see, I'm, I am mar I'm in awe of the creation of Allah, how perfect Allah has created our human body. 
Every single day in the lab, I'm learning about some aspect of the human body. Subhanallah, ya Allah, how genius that is. Uh, we were just learning uh, last week, I was, I was teaching a session on how the difference between child bo- the, the mouth of a child, the, the throat structure of a child, and the throat structure of, a, of an adult. For everyone else, it's just a lesson, it's just something we need to know for the words. But for me, I had to sit down for a minute and be like, SubhanAllah, that's genius. I w- who could have designed this except Allah? The human body became dhikr. For other people, people go to the zoo, for them it's just a, d- a day out. But for you and me, we go to the zoo, Do they not see the camel and how it was created? For us, the zoo is an experience in dhikr. For, other, some, for, for non-Muslims, going to Six Flags is just a day out. It's entertainment. It's a day to hang out, a day to just not think about anything. But for Muslims like you and me, Six Flags is a khutbah. Six Flags is, you can see the creation of human beings and how, how miraculous, how amazing this, this roller coaster is. Imagine how, how great Allah's creation is. Six Flags became a khutbah. For me, I talked about medicine being a career. Every day I'm learning something and every day I'm marveling at the creation of Allah. There are other careers like that too. Accounting. Allah talks about in the Quran, when Allah, when Allah talks about the, the, the contract, that the accountant makes, that the person who's writing the contract makes, Allah says, he could have, Allah could have said anything. But Allah said, فَلْيَكْتُبْ بِمَّا عَلَّمَهُ اللَّهِ He writes from what Allah taught him. This is a contract guy. This is an accountant. This is a, someone who does your taxes. This is, not a, this is not someone who studied deen. But Allah says, this is something I taught him. This is something that he is responsible. This is something that came from me directly. So now when there's a, when there's a non-Muslim accountant, all he's worried about is making, making money. He gets all the rich clients, and when, he, when they come to him, you know, how, many ta- how much tax do I have to give? His, his line is, well, how, many ta- how much taxes do you want to give? Because I can bend all the rules and do whatever you want, and I can you know, make it so that you don't have to pay any taxes, because rich people don't want to pay taxes. But when a, when a Muslim who internalizes, when he has his Quran glasses on, he realizes this is something Allah taught me. This, co- this contract you know, negotiation, this accounting, all this stuff, is something that came from Allah. It's sacred. I can't mess with that. So I'm going to be honest. His job, every day, he's doing his job, he's remembering Allah. Every day, his writing contracts and his figuring out how much taxes people owe, is dhikr of Allah. His job is a khutbah for him, to be fair. So, when we talk about dhikr, it is not just confined to the masjid, it is not just confined to at-tasbih, it is in everything we see around us. When we put our Qur'an glasses on, when we see things and marvel at the creation, this is something Allah made, what can I learn from it? What do I learn from this thing that Allah made? What do I learn from this thing that is around me? Because everything around you, like Allah said, everything around you and me is an ayah. Everything around you and me is something to learn from. History becomes something to learn from. The creation of the earth becomes something to learn from. Allah says, فَسِيرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ فَانْظُرُوا كَيْفَ بَدَأَ الْخَلْقِ Go out into the land and see how Allah started creation. How, cre- how, how creation was started. How this earth was made. Studying geology became a khutbah. When you have your Qur'an glasses on. When you're concerned with how can I take from something, what does it mean to do dhikr? What does it mean when I see something, how can I relate it back to Allah? How can I remind myself of Allah's miracle and how can that benefit me and how can I marvel in that and take benefit from it and come closer to Allah? So may Allah make us all of those who have their Qur'an glasses on. May Allah make us all of those who find dhikr, who find reminder of Allah in every little thing we see around us. When we do that, our entire life will be beautiful and our entire life will be one where we are conscious of Allah and those who are conscious of Allah all the time there is, you know, we, we know all the hadith of them. So may Allah make us of those who are conscious of Allah all the time. Amin ya rabbal alameen. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Azim. Wa nafa'ni wa iyaakum bil ayati wa dhikr al-Hakim. Aqul qawli hadha fa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. Wa lisa'il al-Muslimina fa astaghfiruh. Innahu huwa al-Ghafur Rahim.